Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So this, uh, this story was sent to me by a brother and I saw it actually somewhere else as well. It's two different studies, two different um, basically surveys that are saying that between 43 and 50 percent of women in relationships have a backup plan, meaning another man that is interested in them and who they could potentially go to if their current relationship falls apart. Obviously, first of all, we're not talking about Muslim women. The Tomasin are going to try to pretend like this applies to Muslim women when it does not. But let's just say, let's just take it at face value and say women generally. Of course, again, we're talking about kufar women. This is the way that you're choosing to frame it. Another way you could choose to frame it is 50% of married women are being pursued by men who are interested in marrying divorcees. Which doesn't really go along with the red pill theory. 50% of married women or women in serious relationships who have a quote-unquote body count are actively being pursued by men who want to have relationships with them after their current relationship ends. Means they're interested in divorcees or women with quote-unquote body counts. It doesn't really go with the red pill theory, does it? The women who are in relationships are actively being sought by men. If their uh, significant other is being told continuously that she is a depreciating asset, her future is insecure. Her future is unstable. She has to think about her future, does she not? And I find it particularly funny when, like, Tomasiin will promote this statistic that she's thinking about her future potential of being dropped by a man who thinks that she's a depreciating asset. And then at the same time, while the man is married to her, he's thinking about another wife and another wife and another wife. So he's got three backup plans, except he wants to implement them simultaneously. He wants additional plans. But she's blamed for thinking about the possibility of this relationship ending and then having someone that she can go to afterwards. That's another way to put it. 50% of women do not feel secure in the relationships that they're in. That's another way to put it. Oh, but that would actually put some responsibility on the men. There's different ways that you can interpret that data. One is 50% of married women or women who are in serious relationships are actively being sought after by men who are interested in them after their relationship ends. Men are pursuing married or otherwise taken women. That's one way of interpreting the data. Another way of interpreting the, the, the data is that 50% of women in serious relationships do not feel that those relationships are secure. Whether it's even true or not is, a, is another thing, but the point is they're trying to use this as evidence against women. Every evidence that they come up to try to prove their case turns out to be evidence against them. Because men are not supposed to want divorcees and women with body counts, but they're actively pursuing them. Apparently, according to the statistics that you are yourselves touting, it, it also says in the data that the person that she's thinking about or that she's interested in is a friend of her husband. So is her husband uh, friends with a millionaire or he's, or he's friends with someone who's on his same level socioeconomically? Most likely, her husband's friends or her boyfriend's friends are at his same level. So she's thinking about somebody who's at the same level as her husband. So are they all in the 20%? Are you saying that the 50% of women who are in long-term relationships, who are not looking for someone else, or who are not thinking about someone else, those are all married to millionaires. That's why they're not looking for someone else. That 50% who's looking for someone else, it's because the man that they're with is not a millionaire, who's not from a high-value man, he's not an alpha male, he's not this and that and the other. All of the things that you say a man is supposed to be, apparently that 50% of men is not, they don't qualify for as being a high-value man. Otherwise, the, the woman would not be looking elsewhere. But where is she looking? She's looking at men who are around her, men who are at her job, and men who are her boyfriend or husband's friends. That means people at the same, roughly the same socioeconomic level. So all of the evidence that you're coming up with to try to prove hypergamy disproves it. Try again. Yalla, assalamu alaikum.